What's up? It is eSports Live on a Wednesday. Sam and I both in studio today because the Titans are not on the practice field on this Wednesday. And I think it's a much needed break for the Titans media. Well, I think the Titans players themselves are still doing stuff, whether it's meetings, walkthroughs, workouts, everything that goes on with training camp. But a break for us, the media today, uh, which is great because we'll be back out on the practice field on Thursday and Friday morning as well to wrap up a week as wrap up the week two of Titans uh, training camp here as we get into the month of August. And Sam, we've had about a week's worth of practices and now we're starting to see a couple position battles begin to take shape and the wide receivers are one of them because I feel like we've, we have a pretty good beat on the top guys at the wide receiver position, but there's a lot of younger players, undrafted free agents. Maybe some guys have been, in the organization for a few years in lesser roles, practice squads, uh, former draft picks, uh, a brand new draft pick and Colton Dowell that are fighting for their life. Because we counted, Sam, in my opinion, there are eight wide receivers that are fighting for two roster spots. That's tough math right there. So that's a 75% chance of getting cut just off, off of that math. So we're going to walk through the first four we think are out. Then the last two we think make the squad, the four that we think are locks, and everything in between because it's going to be a juicy conversation with the Titans wide receivers because you've got some no-name guys that are starting to make a name for themselves by making some plays in training camp practice. And it is a Wednesday, which means throwing shade. I've got my shade locked and loaded, Sam. I know you were going to throw shade last week, but we're not on Wednesday. And so you might – uh, throw the X up for your shade today on a Wednesday. So let's get this thing rock and rolling. And you are rocking the chain too, by the way, for the magic bucket. So good to I, see that. I am rocking the chain. I'm rocking some money today. I'm ready to go here. I, I'm firing on all cylinders here on a Wednesday morning, ready to talk some wide receivers and some Titans training camp football. This is like training camp. This is training camp right here. Why you talk about position battles, who might make the 53 and I don't care if we're a week in, I'm ready to go here. And before we get things started, those of you watching, make sure you share the show. If you're watching on Facebook, hit the share button in the bottom right corner. If you're watching on YouTube, take the YouTube link, send it to a friend, send it to a group chat, go on text, whatever it is, retweet us at A to Z Sports. If you're watching on Twitch, I'm going to send some love to the Twitch community as well. Uh, go ahead and take that link and you know, invite any of your Twitch friends and be like, hey, check out this channel, A. A to Z Sports is talking Titans and talking training camp uh, before we kick things off here on a Wednesday morning. Yep, let's get it going officially. Welcome into A to Z Sports, uh, powered as always by the BetMGM app. I'm Austin Stanley. He is Sam Phelan, our Titans reporter at A to Z Sports.com. Uh, we're also, we are Nashville's on demand sports.network, and we go live every weekday morning at 8 central time on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Links to the show segment by segment on our Twitter timeline at A to Z Sport X timeline at A to Z Sports. And also hit us up on Instagram, TikTok, and threads for more great Titans coverage and content there. We got to thank our sponsors because they truly make it happen for us. And they help out all of you guys like Wilson County Hyundai. Make Wilson County Hyundai a part of your new car buying process by seeing them in Lebanon or online at wilsoncountyhyundai.com. The Bone & Joint Institute, boneandjointteam.org, the region's destination for comprehensive orthopedic and sports medicine care. Farm Bureau Health Plans, get better with Farm Bureau Health Plans. That means better coverage rates and service. Learn more about a health plan for you, fbhp.com slash atoz. Uh, the Aura app, keeping us all safe online, and you can get a two-week free trial with Aura if you go to our link, aura.com slash atoz, and Krebs Kubota, an elite Kubota dealer with three great locations in Murfreesboro, Franklin, Columbia, online, KrebsKubota.com. So Sam, before we dive into the wide receiver battle, because it is a battle that is deep, uh, there's a lot of guys out there giving high effort, high energy group with the wide receivers, but we will dive into that. Uh, but Sam, you can first, uh, let's update people on what happened yesterday at Titans practice, because it was a scrimmage like practice, which was fun to watch. Uh, but it got started off on a fiery start with Jamarco Jones and Jeffrey Simmons getting into it. So I'll let you take it from there. Well, uh, the Titans are so interesting in training camp to me, because if you're a fan that's going to training camp and you win the lottery and you've got an opportunity to go, you are really drawing another lottery with what practice you actually attend. Like yeah, you can right. go to some of these practices where the Titans do essentially nothing. They do a few walkthroughs. 
They run a few seven on sevens, but it's pretty uneventful uh, for most of the practice. And we see our fair share of those throughout uh, an entire training camp. And then you have practices like we had yesterday, which is as lively and as happening uh, and as insightful really as they get with the Titans, like you said, really kind of running a scrimmage. It was a lot of 11 on 11. It was unscripted. It was all three quarterbacks and all three teams getting to rotate in. It was Will Levison with the second team at one point. Uh, and it was very, very chippy from the jump. The Titans came in to practice, uh, sent out Ryan Tannehill and the starting offense against the starting defense. Three plays in, Austin, we had a fight, a scuffle. Jamarco Jones, Jeffrey Simmons getting into it. I don't know if you want to call it a, a punch or a slap thrown, but, you know, hands were flying around. Yeah, arms were got, flailing like they were outside of a used car dealership. Yeah, two get removed from practice. They're working out over in the sand pit. You've got Aziz Alshire knocking Traylon Burks to the ground by the horse collar, then punching out a football from Tajay Spears and celebrating. And then the whole first team offense is on the – on the other field doing conditioning back and forth with the first team defense while uh, the backups ran. So it was lively. And, and this energy that we've kind of had boiling from the defensive line, talking a lot of smack in these practices is now kind of coming to a head with the pads coming on. Uh, and it was very, very entertaining stuff to watch. Yeah. And uh, Jamarco Jones uh, did a number on the recycling bin with a big donkey stomp on his way yeah. inside the building to cool off. And Jeffrey Simmons went straight to the sand pit. And that's the thing, you know, the punishment for getting into it at Titans practice is going to the sand pit and doing all of your work and drills in the sand pit. And yesterday was just the second day of full pads and doing uh, uh, a sand pit workout on the second day of full pads on the first day of August is something I don't want any part of. And Jeffrey Simmons and Jamarco Jones took their turn uh, doing all that. But yeah, it was a, a fired up practice, a fun practice to watch in a practice where guys like Reggie Roberson made several plays down the field as a wide receiver. You start to see some of these other young wide receivers start to make a name for themselves. Ryan Tannehill still getting a lot of work done, throwing the football to Traylon Burks and to De DeAndre Hopkins. So Sam, as we go into these wide receiver conversations, the wide receivers are a deep unit. And we've got, you know, the Mason Kinsey, who's leading off every drill, going through it, giving all the effort that he does give and that we're used to seeing the last several times. But you have Kiris Jackson, number five, who's starting to make a name. Nick Westbrook Akine, we've talked about under his one year contract, trying to hang on to his role. Uh, rookie Colton Dow, a seventh round draft pick that, you know, who knows what he, his roster chance is. Uh, you've got some other guys, undrafted free agents, to start to make the run through here. Uh, and then Kyle Phillips, who you definitely know is going to have a role on this team uh, as camp goes on. And then you start to see Trayshawn Harrison. 82's made some plays over the last several weeks. Racy McMath, he's kind of inconsistent, but he's a freak athlete. How much can he help you on special teams? Uh, and then you've got right here Jacob Copeland, who's a, a good athlete, highly recruited out of high school. Uh, then you have Chris Moore, veteran, who looks to be squarely on the roster. And here's our guy, Reggie Roberson, who made several plays uh, yesterday in practice as well. So there's a lot of dudes out there who are flashing ability, Sam. And so there's, in my mind, eight receivers fighting for just two roster spots. But what's your take on how this wide receiver group has developed over the spring and now the first week of camp? Yeah, I mean, it's really interesting, like you said, because certain guys who I had written off or just really didn't think much of are starting to re-enter the conversation with performance. And one of those guys is Reggie Roberson that you talked about, uh, who I thought had a really bad mini camp and was very bad during OTAs and could not hang on to the football and was not running efficient routes. I just didn't see a path for him. Well, over the last two or three days, he's been probably the brightest shining star of the wide receivers in terms of production, playing on the second or third team. But he's Will Levis's favorite target out there. I mean, he had I, two touchdowns for him yesterday, including two deep balls that he got free uh, loose into the secondary. One from Malik Willis, one from Will Levis. He caught two touchdowns from Levis, uh, you know, a few days ago. So he's been all over the place. And so you start to see production from him and it's like, well, is he in the conversation? And I spoke to him yesterday and he said, he's 
making an effort to, you know, be productive on special teams. And, uh, you know, there's still some of these staples like NWI and Racy McMath and Mason Kinsey who are hanging around. But the UDFAs haven't looked bad either. And a lot of people have been impressed with Sean Harrison. So uh, I thought it was a much simpler uh, equation than I think it's proving to be yeah. as we've gotten into camp here. Because whatever the separation was between guys with experience, UDFAs with no experience, or guys I didn't feel like were cut out for the roster, that started to close a little bit. Mm -hmm. The gap is starting to narrow. Uh, so it'll be really, really fun to see, you know, preseason games, roster cuts, how this thing plays out. Yeah, so Sam and I talked after practice yesterday about – who do we feel are locks on the roster and then kind of who's the next group, right? And so here's how we feel like the state of the wide receivers are for the Titans. The guys in green on the left, I feel fairly confident that those four guys really can't do anything to lose their spots. DeAndre lot. Hopkins, Shailen Burks, Kyle lot. Phillips. I think Chris Moore uh, is, is basically a lock to make the roster at this point. Now, NWI, me and Sam disagree on. We'll talk about that uh, later on as not being a lock in my mind. So these other eight guys, NWI, Racing McMath, Mason Kinsey, Reggie Roberson, Colton Dow, Trace on Harrison, Kiaris Jackson, Jacob Copeland. You have that middle column of guys who have been in the organization for multiple, for one or two years. And then the guys on the right who are your first timers, you know, you got the draft pick in Colton Dow and the undrafted guys uh, in Harrison, Jackson, and Copeland who have really stood out. So Sam, we're going to get to the chat here and we're going to ask everybody this question and we're going to go bracketology style. And I like the way you came up with this. It's the old Joe Lenardi first out last four in all of, you know, the next group out the next in everything there bracketology phrasing, but we're going to say who are the Titans wide receivers that are the first four out to get cut. So the first four guys to get cut, because you've got these eight there in white that I think are not locks. So who are the first four out to get cut here uh, as we get deeper into Titans training camp? But first, I'm going to tell you guys about Aura, who has been cutting spammers and telemarketers and data brokers out of my life because I signed up with Aura, who's keeping me safe online back in April. And they had 30 data brokers that were selling my information to telemarketers and spammers and everybody else filling up my voicemail and would and email inbox with things I didn't want or sign up for. Well, Aura automatically submitted me out of those on my behalf, those opt-out requests. They did the work for me. They also uh, manage my passwords and keep those safe. So if there's a data breach and a password gets leaked out there or maybe gets leaked out there, Aura lets me know with a simple notification. It's so easy. They also have credit and identity theft monitoring as parental parental controls, and so many more options there in one app. And you guys can get a two-week free trial for Aura services by going to our link, Aura.com slash ATOZ. It's right there on the screen. Easy to type in, Aura.com slash ATOZ for that two-week free trial to stay safe online with our sponsor, Aura. Today's show powered by BetMGM, the king of sportsbooks. Use the bonus code ATOZ Sports on the BetMGM app and get up to $1,000 back in the form of a bonus bet. If your first bet doesn't win, that's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets. With that code, it's ATOZ Sports. That's why BetMGM is the king of sportsbooks. You got two chances to win big when you first sign up using that bonus code on the king of sportsbooks, BetMGM. Uh, Austin, I see a couple requests from the chat to leave the names up. So as leave you the go names through up this, the whole time. well, we're going to just give That's them another chance to, you know, give this a, give this a look over. We're asking for the first yeah. four out a uh, little bit different from bracketology in the sense that these are the first four that you're cutting. These are the first four that uh, you think are not part of this conversation. When you look at those eight names in white. So who are the first four? four out and then we'll get into some bubble talk uh after we assess yeah. kind of who's not in the picture if we're sticking with our uh march madness theme uh i'll go to the chat here real quick and show that curtis is saying it is kinsey mcmath jackson and nwi are uh, his first four out now uh, ashley says it's roberson kinsey copeland and mcmath scott says it's jackson copeland kinsey and roberson uh, Christian says it is Racy, Kinsey, Jackson, and Holmes. We didn't even have Gavin Holmes on the graphic, but yeah, I, I, 
He's a camp body. Yeah, I, Gavin Holmes is not going to make this roster. Uh, and so some of these other guys have some buzz around them. There is not much buzz about Gavin Holmes right now. So no disrespect. Chris, you're not wrong. No disrespect to Gavin Holmes. Uh, maybe he'll prove me wrong and make a couple plays, and then we'll have to have the conversation. Yeah. But, uh, I haven't made a note of Gavin Holmes so far, so that's not usually good. Uh, Orlando says it's Copeland, Harrison, Kinsey, and McMath. Rooney says it's McMath, Kinsey, Harrison, and Copeland. Uh, Devin says, who does he want gone? Yep, that's Copeland, Roberson, McMath, and Harrison for him. Uh, we've got uh, Dowell, Copeland, McMath, and Kinsey from Angelica. Um, let's see what else we got here. Racy, Harrison, Jackson, Copeland, Copeland, McMath, Harrison, Roberson, Mason, Copeland, McMath, Dowell, McMath, Kinsey, Copeland, NWI, NWI, Kinsey, Dowell, McMath. Jackson, Copeland, Kinsey, McMath. So who are the names that we're seeing here Yeah, that are regularly on the outs for the chat? I think Copeland, yeah. Kinsey are two of the most popular names that yep. I think people have out. Jackson, some. I've seen we've seen McMath a fair amount. Definitely Copeland and Kinsey are. Are two popular ones yes. that are in this first four out group. Uh, of these eight, so yeah. we're cutting four of these eight. Austin, do you want to go first? Do you want me to go first here? Let's first four out. This is first big, four big out. Answer. Yeah, um, I think, and I don't think, I don't think Mason Kinsey is going to be cut like early in the process. I think they're going to keep him around because they like the way he practices. They like, like the way and what he provides on the practice field. But I think Mason Kinsey and Jacob Copeland of these eight have the lowest percentage chance of making the roster. So Mason Kinsey and Jacob Copeland, I do agree with the chat for the most part, are the easiest are two of the easiest cuts on here. I think after that is where it gets really difficult because you've got guys like Racy McMath and Colton Dowell who are draft picks on this roster. Racy's going into year three. Colton's going into year one. I think Racy McMath, Sam, is my third guy of the group. And then you go Reggie Roberson, Jackson, and Harrison. I like Kiaris Jackson a lot. I like the idea of the other two, Roberson and Harrison. But honestly, I think my fourth is going to be uh, Reggie Roberson. I think Reggie Roberson is the fourth. So my my four total uh, first guys out, Kinsey, Copeland, Roberson, and... Uh, Racy McMath. So I cut three from that middle column there. Uh, and then I, you know, lead with NWI, Dowell, Jackson, and Harrison as my last ones kind of standing. So those are my four. Yeah, I, I totally agree on your um, assessment of the Copeland Kinsey situation. I think you have to look on the roster and see what those guys do well and who else they have. And for what Copeland has been during camp thus far, uh, I don't feel like he has had a, a larger impact on, you know, the receiving room than somebody like Treshawn Harrison or Kiaris Jackson has. Uh, he has not been involved with punt return or kick return really at all. Treshawn Harrison, Kiaris Jackson both have been involved on that. Mason Kinsey has been. Uh, I think Kinsey is a guy that probably stays on the practice squad because, uh, like you said, they love how he practices. He's a good guy to be on your uh, scout team uh, just as a, a slot guy and mm -hmm. potentially a backup punt returner if you need him to step up for a game. So uh, Kinsey and Copeland are two ones that I start with. Um, and then I'm just going to stay at the bottom. I'm okay. going to stay with these bottom four and I will go with Kinsey, Jackson, Roberson, and Copeland. Reggie Roberson almost made me change my mind on this with what he's done over the past few days. I still think he has a lot of ground to make up, and it's going to be very difficult for him to earn that spot. Um, I'm interested in speaking a little bit more with the Titans coaching staff and specifically their assistants later this week about which of these guys is excelling on special teams and uh, speak to wide receivers coach Rob Moore about how he views the back end of this room and who has really been developing well in the back end of this room. And uh, people seem to be really impressed. I have not been 
overly impressed with Kiaris Jackson. I mean, he has some really impressive reps and, you know, here's a look at one of his one-on-ones and how crispy can be at times shaking the defender, not once, but twice Mm -hmm. and coming right at me there in the end zone. But overall, I have not felt the, the live rep impact from Kiaris Jackson that I've seen from Treshawn Harrison that I've seen from even Reggie Roberson or some of these other guys. And he's not a draft pick like Colton Dowell. He doesn't have experience in the offense like NWI or Racy McMath. So bottom four for me, first four out, Kinsey, Roberson, Jackson, and Copeland. All right, so the one guy that I cut that you did not was Racy McMath. And I have a, a big reason why I think McMath and Kinsey are both on the outs for me. But first, Sam, tell everybody about the Bone and Joint Institute. The Bone and Joint Institute, the region's destination for comprehensive orthopedic and sports medicine care. You can visit them out in Franklin and schedule an appointment at boneandjointtn.org. Whenever you get hurt in life, you have to know who to trust. And you can absolutely 100% trust the Bone and Joint Institute to take care of you and get you the best care possible when you're injured. Uh, Everything's all under one roof at the same state-of-the-art rehab facility that has rehab, image, surgery, testing, their clinic. It's all in one spot out in Franklin. So you go visit them. Uh, You don't drive from point A to point B, going all over Middle Tennessee to go to different appointments. The best doctors in the area, the best care in the area, uh, the region's destination for comprehensive orthopedic and sports medicine. Care, schedule an appointment. It's boneandjointtn.org. All right, Sam. Also, you can win big with BetMGM. That's our bonus code, ATOZ Sports. When you sign up for the BetMGM app to get that great first bet offer, you can get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet misses with the BetMGM app. Visit BetMGM.com for terms and conditions. 21 or older, Tennessee only new customer offer. All promotions are subject to qualification. Oh, requirements first are online, roll money wager only. Rewards issued at knowledgeable bonus bets. Bonus bets is five seven days from issuance and for probably game of sport. Call Tennessee Redline 800-889-9789. So, Sam, talking about these wide receivers, because we, we do think DeAndre Hopkins, Traylon Burks, Chris, Kyle Phillips, and Chris Moore are proverbial locks uh, here for the Titans. And we have these other eight guys that are fighting for two roster spots. Well, I think two Titans wide receivers are fighting an uphill battle for their potential roster spot. And I cut both of them in our first four out exercise. And that is the fact that I think Mason Kinsey and Racy McMath are those two guys fighting uphill battles because there are redundancy on the roster. You know, Mason Kinsey's time with the Titans was basically going to be cut a lot shorter than it could have been when Kyle Phillips came in and Kyle Phillips made an impact as a rookie fifth rounder um, in training camp as a, you know, last summer, right? And then now you've got Racy McMath, who was supposed to be your bigger bodied, fast, raw, deep threat option, but could help you now on special teams. Now, like, you, you no longer need race and McMath to be your deep threat because you have Traylon Burks to do that because now Traylon Burks doesn't have to be your possession guy because you have DeAndre freaking Hopkins. And then you have other players who are younger and better at playing special teams than race and McMath. Like Sam, I don't know if you've picked up on this or not. When they do these open field tackle drills that we've seen nearly every day, you see wide receivers on DBs going back and forth in those open field tackle drills. Then towards the end, you see a few of the wide receivers flip over and do defensive reps in open field tackle. Racing math is not good at open field tackle drills. And if you want somebody to be a gunner on your punt team, yes, they have to be fast, strong, physical, all these things, but they have to be able to tackle in the open field because what are you doing? You're, you're going to tackle – a punt returner and being able to keep your balance redirect and in contain and also attack and close on a ball carrier in the open field is tackling a punt returner. And I just don't think racing McMath has that. And so I think anything racing McMath offers is picked up by Traylon Burks as a deep threat is picked up by uh, other guys like NWI, like Colton Dowell as special teamers. Uh, and he's not going to give you anything in the return game. So I, I think that's why those two receivers, Kinsey and McMath, are fighting uphill battles. Uh, I disagree on McMath a little bit. Uh, okay. I mean, we know – it. Racy, it comes down to Gunner. Like, the idea that Racy's going to be this deep wide receiver threat that takes the top off is dead. It's a bad narrative. It's 
it's Wait, done. but but it's last done. year it was real. Like you like you were out there last year. It was happening. Last year he was targeted a fair amount during camp. This year he's had a fine amount of targets during camp. Yeah, but, but not he's like not a crisp enough route runner. He's not going to get on the field for offense. That's not what you're asking him to do. The only reason you keep Racy McMath. And, I mean, we'll talk about this, frankly, in a little bit here, Austin, because the number of wide receivers the Titans keep, I think, is up in the air still. But the only reason to keep a guy like Racy McMath is to be a gunner, which we know the Titans value because they signed A.J. Moore specifically to be a gunner. Physically, I'm not sure there's a better guy cut out to be a gunner than the big, strong, fast dude that can get down the field in you know less than five seconds to go make a tackle Mm -hmm. like Gracie McMath is I I haven't paid too much attention to his drills uh but Mike Vrabel talked very highly of Racy as a gunner this time last year how that's evolved I'm not sure I still think there's room for him to earn a spot because I think it's silly to think of these guys they're earning a roster spot outside of NWI, in my opinion, earning a roster spot for receiving prowess. This is going to be a special teams role. This is going to be a guy that you believe can have the largest impact on your team as a special teamer. And I think Racy has to be on the short list of guys, at least, that are impactful as a special teamer, or at least have experience doing it. I mean, you talk about that right column, what is Colton Dowell's experience on special teams? What is Trayshawn Harrison's experience on special teams? I mean, if Harrison can set himself apart as a punt returner or kick returner, or, you know, as a, you know, potential gunner on punt team, then it's, it's certainly possible. But Racy has about as much experience or more experience than anybody on that list. And the physical ability I to just, do it downfield. I just don't think he's very good on special teams. Like I, from watching him, I don't, I think he's big. He's fast. He's a freak athlete. I just don't think he has the skill set, and he hasn't learned this. This is his third training camp, right? Like true. You know, he, he should be better at open field tackling in his third training camp because his hip injury from last year did not affect him negatively for his training camp. He had a great training camp last year and somebody brought up, uh, in the chat, the reason why Racy de- or deep threat Racy was a real thing last year is because he was running by Caleb Farley, and Caleb Farley is not out there because he's on the PUP uh, list, recovering from his injury. So I, I don't think Racy McMath is going to make the team. I-, I think he is an easy cut. I think there is just more upside at this point in saying, okay, maybe Karis Jackson and Trayshawn Harrison don't have a ton of experience as special teamers, but do they have upside in it because Racy's in his third camp and he's still here. Maybe they're in their first camp and they're here, but you like the ability for them to catch up and surpass Racy uh, maybe at some point. Yeah, it could be. I, I like, and I, maybe that'll be something that I prioritize into next week is I, I'd like to talk to Trey Sean Harrison and yeah. uh, Kiaris Jackson and figure out just how experienced as uh, special teamers they are. I believe they both have returned experience, but I don't know if there's a return job up for grabs with the Titans right now. So it's going to be, you know, can you cover on kick team or punt team? And can you tackle, uh, which are not things that everybody's done. Like Hassan Haskins is not really somebody that you would have expected to be a standout special teams type of player. It's something that he excelled in last season. So you don't know. Uh, you know, which of these guys might be able to do that. Uh, and that, that is the difference at this point. Like I, like I said, this is a special team spot. If you're talking about wide receiver six, in my opinion. Yeah, I'm with you there. I do think it's interesting that Mason Kinsey is now the easiest to cut where the last couple of off seasons, Mason Kinsey has been a, this guy needs a spot on the roster type of guy from a lot of fans and now it just seems like his time is kind of wearing thin, not because of his own doing. It's just because of maybe there is some of the fatigue from fans of being enamored by the work ethic and it, they've just gotten better around Mason Kinsey. And I think people understand, well, Kyle Phillips is a lot better than Mason Kinsey and you don't need two of those guys really. Yeah. I mean, I think it's nice to have one on your practice squad, yeah. but you don't need two of them on the active roster. And so, 
that is, you know, pretty open and shut case as far as impact on an active roster is concerned. Uh, Mason Kinsey, like you said, tremendous work ethic, uh, pretend like his only chance only chance would be if Kyle Phillips is that bad as a punt returner and, you know, and he can't catch the ball still, which I don't foresee happening. Uh, tremendous work ethic, great story, has made a good career for himself, uh, and hopefully he sticks around on the practice squad. I think he's, a, you know, a good, valuable guy to have around as your, you know, option at punt returner or slot if you if you need someone to step up on a, on a short notice. But, yeah, I think that that one is pretty much open and shut. And it, it really comes down to what you said, which is just what's on the roster already. What holes are you trying to fill? Who can provide you with something unique? Um, and in that first group of guys, you don't have that gunner special teams tackler uh, provided for you already, which is that which is why I refer to that special teams value as specifically where somebody can earn a role. Yeah, agency sports here live on uh, this Wednesday morning. So, Sam, let's get down to the bubble, right? Because we've got we've cut four each of us. I cut McMath, you cut Kiaris Jackson. Uh, so, you know, we we've, we're down to the bubble. So, which Titans wide receivers make the team to join Burks, Hopkins, Phillips, and Chris Moore? Because we like those four as locks. So, which of the guys? Uh, here make the team out of the eight to join them. So we're going to go bubble talk here. And now it's going to get really interesting with a decision uh, with Nick Westbrook Akine. Uh, but first, let me tell you guys about Krebs Kubota. Krebs Kubota, they're Middle Tennessee's preferred equipment dealer and an elite Kubota dealer, which means you get elite warranties and elite equipment in the industry with the Kubota line. They've got it. Our guys, Matt and Jamie, phenomenal as well there with Krebs because they take care of you. Krebs Kubota is all about customer service and building a relationship with you to help you get what you need, whether you have a big project around your house or uh, a smaller one. Maybe you just need a new trimmer, new mower. They've got you there. Krebs Kubota in Franklin, Columbia, and in Murfreesboro. Or if you need to go big with a, a hay baler, any other power unit implementations, applications that you've got around your property, Krebs Kubota can help you out. Once again, an elite Kubota dealer with three great locations, Columbia, Franklin, and in Murfreesboro, online at KrebsKubota.com. Today's show powered by BetMGM, the king of sportsbooks. Use that bonus code. It's ATOZ Sports when you sign up with BetMGM and you get another chance to win big if your first bet loses. You place that first wager on the BetMGM app. And even if it loses, you get up to $1,000 back in the form of a bonus bet, a second chance to win big, limited risk for you. Uh, that's as good as it gets. It's why they're the king of sports books and why we love BetMGM. So sign up with them. Use that bonus code ATOZ Sports on the BetMGM app. All right, Sam, now it's to the nitty gritty. We've got one or two spots left, right? So it's bubble talk here. You What? what? Well, real quick, chat kind of, wanted to make a note of my comment about Kyle Phillips earlier. JR says Phillips will never punt return again. Two tone Malone says Phillips at punt return or question yep. mark. Uh, yeah. I would place a very large wager on bet MGM that Kyle Phillips is the Titans punt return of week one. I don't see anybody else rivaling him for that position. So yes, he will punt return again. He'll be the guy until uh, he messes up or barring injury. And they feel like they need to go in another direction, but uh, we spoke to Craig Ackerman yesterday, and I didn't get the sense that it was too open and shut, uh, like that there was really much competition. You ask him the names that he's got back there, he says, well, obviously, Kyle, you know, Mason's worked back there a little bit. Uh, Tajay Spears has not been back there. It's been Treshawn Harrison, Kiaris Jackson, and uh, I believe that's it. I, I mean, it's been a very limited group of guys that have been back there mm -hmm. returning punts. Kyle Phillips is going to be the guy. Yeah, I feel pretty confident in saying that too. Um, and I, I think there should be a team rule that Mike Vrabel makes is that nobody should ever return a kickoff. Like the team rule is let that thing be a touchback every time. I mean, unless it's kicked to the one yard line. No, fair catch people. it. That's a new rule this year. Yeah, but, yeah, but if you catch it at the one yard line, you no, should bring it out. No, the Titans out. have been showing us, Sam. They don't have anybody that can that can return at a high level nor can they block a kick return at a good enough level to help any type of returner fair catch it. Let it be a touchback, get the ball on 25. That should be a team rule. Do not screw it up. 
for no reason. That is my strong feeling. About it would be funny team. if a team went through an entire football season and didn't return a kick. Don't do it. It's you're going to have better field position. If you just let it be a touchback and get it at 25, that's, that's my take. All right. So how funny down to the if they had like a couple kick return touchdowns this year. That would be yeah, a, right. would have run my dreams. Back. Nah. Uh, anyway. All right. Down to the bubble. So we like these four in green on the left as locks. Sam, I don't think NWI is a lock. I know you disagree. But first, before we get to, is it five or six receivers? Like, I think that is the first question because we have to figure out how many spots are truly available. But five or six receivers available, uh, what do you think they end up doing? Now, we're not going to go full roster projection and break down on where the last couple spots remain on the roster. But six receivers is not crazy to see somebody keep. Uh, and I typically like seeing six receivers make the team, but what do you think they do five or six this year? Well, it kind of spoils my answer to who I think gets the sixth spot. If okay. you want me to go into it, but yeah, NW, NWI is a lock. He's going to make the team. Yeah. I think, I think he might be more of a lock than somebody like Chris Moore, even like really? I, I think NWI is their fourth best wide receiver. Like as far as receiving the football pass catcher. Is. Yeah. Uh, potentially their second or first best blocking wide receiver in terms of his uh, ability in the run game. He is their most experienced wide receiver in the offense. He's going to make this team. I have zero doubt about that. Uh, And I think he's had a pretty good camp so far too. Uh, He's made some nice plays early on. So real quick on, on NWI. I think he by far has the highest chance of making the team of the eight, not in green, but I just don't think he's a lock because I think it, it, it takes one of the other guys to elevate themselves that to make the coaching staff and rank Carthon say, ah, can't cut that guy. Cause I still feel like if NWI is on this roster in 2024, the Titans messed up their wide receiver group over a two year projection. But why would he be on the roster in 20? Like, I don't think this year has anything to do with next year. He's on a well, one-year deal. It's, it's, it's a, it's a, if you have, if you have NWI and another guy or even, I think you leave NWI. If they're even, he's leaving. Because if they're even and you get a guy who's on a contract for multiple years and they're even, you keep the long-term contract guy and NWI's out. That, but you sure. have to have somebody be even. And sure, right now, nobody else even. is. Yeah, I don't think anybody's even. And I don't think Yet. they will be. Because one of the things NWI provides that has him up here while everybody else is here is the experience in the offense. That might not matter to you. It might not matter to the fans. It matters to Mike Vrabel. And it matters to Tim Kelly. And his special teams value. Like, he's a willing special teamer and a capable special teamer. He knows where to be. He knows how to block. That's not the standard, right? He's wide receiver four or five on this team, but I think he's an adequate wide receiver. All right, so before five. before we dive into your other like spot, who do you think of those seven has the best chance to be even with NWI? Colton Dowell, because okay. I think he's the same type of player. Um, he has similar build, good size, similar speed. Uh, can he set himself up and be reliable enough as a re- like as a possession guy to you know run intermediate routes uh, and and be where he's supposed to be block well downfield and if so then maybe Colton Dowell is your long term replacement for NWI as a right. seventh round pick. I haven't seen that out of Colton Dowell yet, but I think and this goes into my last spot there. I think there's a better chance that Colton Dowell gets the sixth spot by earning the number six spot and you still keep NWI than him unseating NWI for one of the spots on the team. He hasn't been too act. Like, I think there's a lot to like physically very, very impressive. Colton Dowell is so is NWI. You look at him Mm -hmm. just like standing next to you in pads and you're like, okay, yeah, that's an NFL wide receiver. Uh, He hasn't had too big of an impact on the team periods yet. And this is, I guess, where you and I disagree. A lot of this one is on NWI status. And number two, I think they keep five. I would be surprised if any of these dudes made the roster. The only one I could see doing it is Colton Dowell, because I think being the draft pick, 
having the future value. We know what they thought about his upside. And the question for me, does Colton Dowell show enough during the preseason and training camp where the Titans feel like they will lose him if they try to practice squad him? Right. Because if you like, if you try and practice squad him and you feel like somebody else is going to pick him up, then maybe you keep him around just to have him around for next year. But I don't think he's ready to be Nick Westbrook Akine. I don't think he's ready to have that level of impact right now. And so there's a real good chance they keep five wide receivers. That would not surprise me at all. And yeah, I would green NWI up there at the top. I think he's a lock to make the roster. Okay. So you're saying if there's six, it's NWI and Dow. Yeah. Okay. So one, Nobody's we have one of those other, like that's the thing you have to keep in mind. I think is, is who's picking up the guy that you're trying to throw on your practice squad. And uh, yeah. I don't think like, I think you can get away with practice squatting Roberson, Harrison, Jackson, McMath, whoever Kinsey this season. I don't know if you can get away with practice squatting Colton Dowell. And so that it would be the one guy that I'd consider keeping uh, depending on how he looks over the next few weeks. All right. There's one guy that I think uh, look, overall, I don't disagree with where you're at. I, I do think you're probably pretty close uh, to being correct with NWI being the fifth. And then I also think Colton Dowell is the sixth, but I, I do think uh, there's another guy that is, you know, has an opportunity to really fight his way uh, to have a great chance of making the roster because of the flashes he's shown us. And now coaches are starting to talk more about him. But first, uh, let me tell you guys about our friends at Farm Bureau Health Plans. They can help you out for any of your health coverage needs. Farm Bureau Health Plans have been doing it for Tennesseans for over 75 years. Uh, and whatever your health coverage situation is, whatever your life situation is, maybe you're single and you need you know, help with your health coverage. Maybe you've got a young, growing family and you want to plan for the entire family. They can do that for you. Or maybe you're empty nested. Maybe the kids are out of college and you and your spouse are just riding in to a great life of, of uh, relaxation and you need the next level of health coverage. Farm Bureau Health Plans got you there too. And it's so easy to sign up. They've got 200 plus locations across the entire state, but it's so easy to just go to their website fbhp.com slash atoz that's fbhp.com slash atoz uh, to check them out because it's it's a health assessment that takes you know 20 30 minutes and then once you're in with farm bureau health plans you're locked in for life so get in early it's only going to help you out in the long run 40 50 years plus down the road so check them out farm bureau health plans fbhp.com slash atoz Today's show powered by BetMGM, the king of sports books. Use the bonus code ATOZ Sports on the BetMGM app and get up to $1,000 back in bonus bets. If your first bet doesn't win, you place that first wager, you use that bonus code. And even if you lose, you're getting your money back with a second chance to win big, up to $1,000. That's why we love BetMGM. It's why they're the king of sports books uh, all summer and all the time. So use that bonus code ATOZ Sports on BetMGM.com. All right, so we're asking who are the two bubble receivers that we think make the roster. If they keep six, we both think that it's NWI and Colton Dowell. Nick uh, asked, is Dowell going to get 30 catches and 440 yards like NWI average the last couple of seasons? Probably not, but those were also NWIs. I don't think NWI does that this year either. I, the yeah. opportunity is going to be less. So, uh, you know, but in NWI's rookie year, he caught like one pass and it was from Logan Woodside on a fake punt. Like, you know, it worked. It was, they converted a first down <laughs> in his rookie year. Uh, but, you know, Colton Dowell is not going to be expected to do that. And then, so Ken brings up, Harrison will make a spot if they keep six. And I think, I think pretty clearly, Treshawn Harrison is wide receiver seven at this point. And as an undrafted free agent out of Oregon State, he has done a lot of really impressive things. I mean, here's a couple of clips that Treshawn Harrison made uh, and, you know, very different clips. One, the speed to just leave the defender and the ability to track and receive and keep his feet going on the sideline. And the next one over, you know, Amani Hooker, that's your starting highly paid safety right there. A physical catch with, you know, Hooker all over his back to come down with it. I think Treshawn Harrison is doing a – he, I think, is your guy that does some good stuff in joint practices and preseason games, they could get poached uh, if he has a really strong preseason by another team because of his ability that he's flashed through five practices, right? It's been five days. 
that he's flashed and continues to con- to get more name recognition. Yeah, he's at a great camp. He has had a great camp early on. Like he went from probably the third biggest name of those UDFAs. Like I feel like Copeland and Kiaris Jackson were, you know, better known and more highly thought of coming in. And Treshawn Harrison has surpassed both of them in my eyes as, you know, a contender here. Uh, just based on production and yeah I feel like I'm looking down being like oh 82 again there's 82 yeah um so I, I I'm calling him Mr. President now because I messed up his name because I called him Washington and you said wrong president I, yeah I well I, <laughs> I I did that too like for whatever reason I started calling him. Harrison Washington Trayshawn Madison is a Adams what was his name yeah again? yeah you start rolling through the presidents but yeah eventually you'll you'll find the right one I'm really interested in seeing him in a preseason game. I I really am because I think that will cement what you said right there. Like, I think it will either go one way or another. He's either a guy that's shown flashes in training camp. It's not really on tape, though, in a preseason game, and you can get away with practice squatting him. Or he might explode. And if he has a couple big games, then the Titans are going to be pressed with you know, the question of can we get away with trying to store this guy or do we have to keep him on the 53 or lose him? Um, I think it's an uphill battle, though. Like, I just, just I don't think they I don't think they keep six. And I think the only reason you do is to protect your seventh round pick, uh, the guy that you clearly had some belief in moving forward. But I also so think I, Colton Dowell. Dowell. I think Colton Dowell was very easily an undrafted free agent as well. You know, true, but they picked him for a reason. Yes, yes, they spent the seventh round pick. Man, um, so do you agree with me that you think Harrison's wide receiver seven? I do, which I, means I think, he's over racing McMath. Well, I think it dep- depends what you're looking at. If it's wide receiver versus special teamer, uh, but opportunity to make the roster, like I the, give Harrison a better shot to make the roster than McMath right now. Yeah. All right, and I like Kiris Jackson. So that's the wrong one. That's Mason Kinsey. That's Kinsey. I yeah. I, I do like Kiris Jackson. <laughs> I. I personally have not been too impressed with Kiris Jackson, not in a bad way. He just hasn't done a ton in like these one-on-one reps are fine. They're cool and all. I need to see more in a live period. I need to see more in a game simulated, you know, experience and guys like Reggie Roberson guys like, you know, even a guy like Mason Kinsey gets a lot of targets during, you know, and, it, drops. He had some drops. He's, he's made some drops. He's made yeah. some touchdowns, you know, and I will say that first drop was kind of on Will Levis. That thing was like a 68 mile an hour rocket from five yards away that, you know, just, I'm not sure anybody catches except maybe DeAndre Hopkins. Um, <laughs> but uh, Jared Jackson just hasn't done a ton in the live period for me to be overly impressed with him at this point. Right now he's just kind of, middling for me and uh potentially can turn my head in the future but i i put harrison above him a to z sports here live on this wednesday pistol ramsey asks when is the first preseason game it is a week from saturday that is in chicago sam will be in chicago for that preseason game uh so pistol ramsey i uh, gonna get ready for uh titans bears up there at noon you got some more comments there Lou man says he thinks they keep seven. No, they're keeping three quarterbacks. I think, I think they're keeping four running backs. They might keep four tight ends. They're not keeping seven wide receivers. Look, we have <clears throat> the tight ends. I like the tight end. A lot of tight ends. Oh. And they're making plays. All of them are. So yeah. I think you got four tight ends. You might have four running backs. You might have three quarterbacks. You're not keeping seven. I mean, you, you go to the running backs and you're thinking, okay, there's some pretty talented running back. Now you don't have a you don't have a fullback anymore like you had with Tory Carter the last Ooh. couple of years that you're going to keep. But you do have some running backs on the back half of the roster look pretty strong. But that's yeah, I mean that's the point, right? Like you when you're taking, it's not always eye for an eye. Like a quarterback doesn't necessarily mean you take keep one less wide receiver. But I think when I have confidence they're going to keep as many skill players as they are, whether that's a tight end, a, a, an extra tight end, extra running back, extra quarterback. Yes, Music City Malik. I think they keep five. Uh, so that's bad news for everybody on this list that's not named 
Hopkins, Burks, Phillips, Moore, Westbrook, now, May, now in my Jay, opinion. But, Jay says, uh, you don't need to keep four running backs at all. And my answer to that is, yes, you do. And one of them has a uh, pending legal situation. Uh, it's a funny thing. Uh, I don't think he's one of the four running backs. Oh. So, yeah, there you go. I don't think. Uh, I, uh, man, this is, so we're one week into camp officially, right? Now we get to start having some of these conversations where, where I, I had no idea Sam's take on running backs. And now I'm intrigued. Now that's another show we're going to do. Yeah. Uh, and I have some opinions about the tight ends. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's, this is where we get to start having takes on takes uh, on this one. I like that. I like I'm that pumped. Idea. I, like this is, yeah, this is take season. That's what this is. Three weeks of take season before the season gets going. So uh, yeah. right, I'm going to ask the chat one question. How soon do you want Sam's first 53 man roster projection? It's a good, uh, it's a good question because I don't know how, how I've been, Sam I thought about this man roster. <laughs> I thought about this yesterday before you called me. I want to know. I was like, is it too early? Is it too early to it's do Sam's first? It might, be but too not early. by, not by far. No, we got some tomorrows. Uh, Steel Titan says yesterday. We're in a lot of tomorrows, Sam. And here's the good yeah, thing about like, tomorrow is you have no practice today, so you got a lot of time to put together that roster for tomorrow. I feel I just feel like I need to see a preseason game before I can no, throw together no, a you, No, because then this is about checkpoints, right? You get yeah. your first week of practice, then you get your after your first preseason, then you get after second preseason, and then you're right before cuts. So well, that's then four headlines gonna have Sam, Sam's way too early. Uh, 50. Hey, man this is there. it's like mock drafts. You have the senior bowl, the post senior bowl mock draft, yeah, the post combine mock draft, the post free agency wave mock draft, and the week of, right? It's just the same yeah. thing, yeah. That's hard to do though. Uh, the running back thing is going to be maybe a hot take in my 53, but we'll, maybe we'll uh, we'll get that going by the end of the week. Yeah, I, I think end of the week. I think okay. in the week we'll, is the we'll have it by this weekend. Then we'll do it. Why not get the people? Uh, says it's too you, too early to hear. you can read my practice notes all you want, which I recommend doing it. I, I'm yep. trying to take people inside every practice. If you can't make it out, you didn't win the fan lottery. You're not going out to St. Thomas sports park. Read my practice notes. I, I'm trying to walk through kind of chronologically what happened every day so that people understand uh, some of the notable things that happened. But you can read those all you want. Really, we just want to know who's making the roster. So you know, uh, maybe we'll we'll get that going soon. And you know, the the multiple roster projections are just for trends. It's trending up, trending down. It's trying to figure out, yeah. you know, if they're keeping three quarterbacks, where's who's losing the spot, who's making the special team spots, all of that. The kicker, we haven't even talked kicker yet. I know Sam has kicker hot takes. I feel like uh, that's really public where I'm at with kicker right now. Yeah, but, you know. Man. All right, Sam, let's get to throwing shade because we've I've got shade to throw and I know you've got shade to throw. So get your shade ready as we wrap up every Wednesday with throwing shade. Hey, presented by Wilson County Hyundai. Make our friends pain bone and Wilson County Hyundai a part of your new car buying process. So go see them in Lebanon or check them out online at Wilson County Hyundai. Dot com. So, Sam, do you want to throw shade first? Yeah, I've got two shades. Um, you, need to get them off my chest. Wednesday last last week. So you had to hold on to a shade, right? Right. Yeah. So my first shade, just Elon Musk. I have to shade Elon Musk off the bat because uh, he's done a lot of good. His, he's, I was reading his Wikipedia the other day and it just blows my mind how like he doesn't really miss on companies and inventions. Like he, he's great, great uh, creative man. Little too creative right now because he's goofing with this X thing uh, instead of Twitter. I, I hate it. He like, this is just, we didn't ask for this. It, the name Twitter Twitter was broken when Elon took over already. We need to get that clear. But uh, the name Twitter, that bird logo was not. So uh, keep it. I, I, I cannot, I still can't find it on my phone. I scroll through, I see the X thing and I, I yeah. miss it over and over again. Calling it X.com, it doesn't make sense. 
calling it a tweet on Twitter, I thought was brilliant stuff. And what are we supposed to call it now? It's a post. It's a post. Did you see they changed it? It's post. It's post. Is it repost then for like yes. a retweet? Like yes. See, it was so unique. It was so perfect where it was. At. We didn't ask for this. So I got to shade Elon for that. That's my first minor shade. Here's my big oh, one. Can I and, respond to the to the X shade? Absolutely. Yeah. Because I I don't like look, I think it's stupid. Uh, but what drives me the most crazy is that I keep hitting the wrong app on my phone. Because I'm used to seeing blue and I tap it. I'm in a hurry. I'm at practice. The sun's out. It's hot. I've got a video and I want to tweet this out to you guys now. And I keep hitting my Nest Cam app mm. that is also blue and is below where Twitter is. But now Twitter is a black X and I keep going to the blue Nest Cam. Well, listen, the back end of our website when I'm writing also yeah. has a black logo up at the top. That's and right. so as I'm scrolling through, going from article to Twitter, X, whatever, I get lost all the time because I there's so much little black logos that blend in with my darkness mode on my laptop as well. So it, it's bad news for me. Uh, my second shade, this is top of mind. This is on my heart. It's heavy today. Shade, shade, shade on is very niche, but spoiled sports fans that don't realize how spoiled they are. Mm, okay. These are my least favorite people maybe on the planet. I, I, I hate these people. And there's probably some of them in chat because Atlanta Braves fans, you are spoiled. You don't realize you're spoiled and I hate you. Uh, New York Yankees fans, you are spoiled and I hate you. The entire city of Philadelphia, you're spoiled. You, you try and act like, woe is me and I hate you. Boston. Boston. Well, Boston, no. See, Boston's different because Boston realizes that they're lucky. Boston's like, they, they know how good it is to be a Boston sports fan. Okay. I, I hear Eagles fans moping about that Super Bowl from this past year, like being like, oh, life is so No, hard. Eagles, no. The one Eagles one. fans are, it's like newish money. True. Because they they're were over the new, like, what fan bases don't realize spoiled fan bases don't realize that there are people out there myself included that would kill to lose in the playoffs every year that would kill to win one championship and you know have everything else be playoff loss after playoff loss i listen in the media room to a whole lot of new york yankees fans that are on the titans beat moping about a team that's five games over 500 this season because it's not the Yankee standard. I would kill to watch my baseball team be five games over 500. So the, the baseball trade deadline just passed. The White Sox traded away all their good players. We don't have to talk about it much. I'm sad about it. And it got me thinking about somebody that is around my age that's a Chicago sports fan. And I have seen two playoff wins for my teams combined in my lifespan. <laughs> And, I and, your, like, and your teams are like, you're talking about Bears, White Sox. I don't care about the Blackhawks. Or the Bulls. The Bulls. Here's the are, thing. You don't care about the Blackhawks, but they've also won like three Stanley Cups in your lifetime. Yeah, but Chicago doesn't care about the Blackhawks. They're lying if they tell you they do. It's fake because the Bears aren't good. So I, I have a hard time finding a fan, like, and I love Illinois basketball. They lose in the first round of the tournament every single year. And so... I just, I, I don't know. I have a hard time having sympathy for fan bases that have such a spoiled history of regularly competing and have something to look forward to every year and then like to pretend like the world is so hard for them. Um, Darius, I appreciate you acknowledging the fact that. Uh, Not that everybody, he, just he's certain grateful. people in fan bases. Yeah. And Troy says wrong about Philly fans. I, Philly fans I have heard are like, the Phillies lost the World Series and the Eagles lost the Super Bowl and the, the, the Sixers keep losing in the Eastern Conference Finals. And I'm like, you got like all of your teams in the playoffs. Like that's an amazing time to be a Philly sports fan right now. So I don't know, big rant, but it just irritates me. Like appreciate, appreciate history. 
and appreciate uh, sustained success because there's a lot of people out there that don't have any of it. And, you know, we're sad right now. So All right. shade here. Uh, let's see. Hang on. Time out. Uh, oh, Time out. Yeah. No, because this is what I'm talking about. How are Braves fans spoiled? The Braves have won been over 500. 75% of the time since 1995, since 1990, probably 80% of the time they've won a world series, two world series in that span. They've been to the playoffs or the NLCS or the world series a number of times. They are one of the better run organizations in baseball, top to bottom. <clears throat> and yet we like to pretend because they had a couple bad years in the 2010s that it's like tough to be a Braves fan. No, Braves fans, well, and, and Atlanta fans as a whole have. Uh, the Falcons uh, is a different story. No, Falcons but they fans. have a Atlanta fans have a victim mentality about their teams because they haven't been able until the Braves won it recently. They were always and then Georgia right recently too. They're always kind of like good enough but not great enough. Like my they're there but they team, can't break through. My baseball team in my memory has one season of winning 90 games and two seasons being over 500. Since 1991, the Braves have won 90 games, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 times. They're going to do it a 20th you're, time. You're, you're literally year. turning into Mike Francesa counting on, on, on Which her. is fine. I don't <laughs> care. They, look at these playoff appearances right here. It They made – 11 straight playoffs. Uh, You're spoiled. Shut up. All right. More shade uh, right, coming right. in here. Um, uh, Ty says shade on NFL for charging $450 for NFL Sunday ticket. Uh, yeah, that's tough. Uh, Matt says throwing shade at no trivia this week. Need to move trivia to no practice days. Yeah, look, we just didn't have time. Uh, Jack and I didn't have time yesterday. I had to, I had to run out there to the heat. Uh, but we actually are trying to figure out when we can move trivia throughout the season and make it more regularly. Um, you see, Jay says shade on the people talking about DeAndre Hopkins age, but praising the Jags for Calvin Ridley when he's literally, uh, uh, already two years younger. Uh, yeah, fair. Um, Bork says shade on Doja cat for calling her fans creepy and going at them on social media. She's lost over a half a million followers. I did not know that was happening. Ooh. That's uh, yeah, don't, Probably don't, not a good idea. Yeah. Don't bite the hand. Right. Uh, scary says, uh, Shade on Canada for not getting that forest fire under control and smoking us out every day. I need a gas mask to walk the dog. Yeah, um, that's tr that's pretty tough. Uh, Eric's just telling me to move my apps around so I stop clicking on the Nest app. But yeah, that's a whole problem though. I've got my apps. I like them how they are. They're they're at they're strategically placed for my. See, mine are not, and I still won't move them because it's muscle memory at this point. Like, yeah. You know where your apps are. You know where to go. So yeah, I can't move them. Sorry. Uh, Nick says shade on no sports trivia. Y'all can be late to Titans practice. No, we can't because we can only video stuff <laughs> we really at the very can't. beginning. So if we're late to Titans practice, you guys get no video. So no, we cannot be. Um, let's see. Shade on Sam for not being prepared on Monday. Oh, oh your chain. Oh yeah. With this guy. Yeah. yeah. Well, Hey, we got it now. It's a good one too. It's pretty heavy. I think this might be yeah. real question mark to it. All right, so uh, my shade, Sam, is on people who are bashing Jalen Hurd. So Jalen Hurd retired officially from the NFL and from football yesterday. Okay. Sam, you're like, I, I, why do people care? Jalen Hurd <laughs> is the best high school football player that I have ever watched with my two eyes from the Middle Tennessee area, who was a high school phenom. Uh, back several years ago, was a five-star running back recruit, ran for, I'm not exaggerating, I think he had 3,000-something yards his junior year. He had a ton of yards his senior year, had a shoulder injury, shut it down. But I would watch Jalen Hurd run for 300 yards and play 50 snaps on defense and do it every time. And led Beach to a state championship, went to Tennessee, was about 500 yards away from being the Vols' all-time leading rusher with plenty of games left in his career, and it all fell apart. He transferred to Baylor, changed a wide receiver, went to the NFL, bounced around, never played a snap in the NFL, and retired from the from the league yesterday after joining the Patriots. But people, I'm throwing shade at people because I tweeted this out. Jalen Hurd, by far the best uh, athlete I've ever watched play high school sports in person with my eyes. 
And and it's just wild how he never played an NFL snap. It's just wild. And he's too young for that to end so quickly. And people are like, yeah, well, you know, they he shouldn't have played running back. He, you know, he messed it up himself. No, the person you should blame for Jalen Hurts' career falling apart is Butch Jones. Former cool. Tennessee Vols head coach Butch Jones lied to Jalen Hurts in recruiting and continued to lie and through his career. And that is what broke the Jalen Hurd relationship. That is why Jalen Hurd transfer, I thought going uh, to wide receiver was would, was the right move for his longevity. But Butch Jones is who to blame for Jalen Hurd's exit at Tennessee. And I, I, I'm tired of it. It's been too many years. It was 2016 when he left the Vols. And now you've got all these Vol fans coming out that have amnesia and forgot the real reason why it fell apart and crumbled. It was the head coach, Butch Jones, lying the whole time. And that's why Jalen Hurd left. So don't blame Jalen Hurd. I appreciate Jalen Hurd's career because I got to watch it early on back when I was covering high school football, Sam, uh, in the early part of my career. And that dude was just an absolute stud. And I hate that he wasn't able to see it materialize into the league like it should have gone. Yeah, I mean, a guy that, uh, you know, you wish just was around in the NIL era. Um, and he's one of a few of those guys that was a high school highlight reel, college highlight reel, uh, was a big man on campus at one point that never really saw that materialize into NFL success or, um, you know, monetary success. So uh, unfortunate for him to uh, kind of have it end the way that it did and for uh, him never to really realize his potential for sure. So, I mean, that's my reaction to that is yeah, yeah. wish that guy was around for the NIL. It goes for a lot of those, you know, popular mixtape guys at the time that, uh, you know, could have made yeah. real money I mean, all in college. Another like Marcus Lattimore. I don't know if you remember him running back from yeah. South Carolina that was untackleable and just had knee injuries and he never played a snap. The Anthony either. Thomas. It's a good one. Or Anthony Thomas. D Anthony Thomas. Oh, D. Oh, yeah. D Anthony Thomas, like the super or, fast guy Oregon, out of Oregon. Yeah. Tavon Austin, I guess, had a good NFL career, but would have made a uh, ton of money. Oh, uh, go, you can go to West Virginia yeah, and just yeah. name all of them, right? Oh, yeah. I, just there's a lot of guys like that that you wish uh you know that could have made a ton of money uh you know playing college football even somebody he made plenty of money but what would tim tebow have gotten in nil if he was playing uh at florida now Maybe, that's uh, that's a re- kevin white yes kevin white was great Chicago uh, Pat Bears. White, See, but Kevin White got his money because he was a first. He was a but top Pat, ten. Uh, what about Pat White? Because I was trying to think Pat one. White at West Virginia would have. Man, this is just a you know, going down the list of who would made the most money in NIL that never panned out in the NFL. Yeah, right? it's it, it's about uh, it's a yeah money thing to me too. Like Kevin White, somebody he actually played like five years in the league, hanging around rosters. Like he played like last year for somebody, mm-hmm. uh, but he was. And he was also a first round pick. So he got his, he got his money, you know, in there mixed in there. But yeah, some of these other guys that just never really made a roster, um, but were huge college stars. You would like to see what they would do if they were in the NIL era. Got some Charlie Ward drops in there. I mean, there's just some dudes. There's some dudes that were ballers in college that just, you knew never had a shot in the NFL. I mean, you go back to, uh, Oh, uh, Trent Richardson out of Alabama just did deadly first stuff. round pick though. Yeah, but he just he was terrible. Uh and I mean Reggie Very Bush bad. is the answer, right? Reggie Bush would have made millions, millions and millions. He, uh let me correct myself. Reggie Bush did make millions in college, which is why he no longer had a <laughs> trophy in his house. Oh man. But all right, Sam. Hey, good show today. Um, on this show. I just wanted to I wanted to have Jalen Hurts back one more time, right? Because He's out of our lives now. He retired from the NFL. After today, the news cycle flips over. He's out of our lives. But I wanted to give uh, props to a great, one of the best Middle Tennessee high school football prospects that has ever come out of here, uh, out of the 615, because he was an absolute stud. And I was a, it was a pleasure to be able to watch him play high school ball because that was something I'll never forget. So, all right, guys, we'll be back out there at Titans practice tomorrow morning on a Thursday uh, so get ready for that. So make sure you like the show before we head out of here. There's always way more people watching that have hit that thumbs up like button. So please on Facebook, on YouTube, hit the like 
uh, button for us. We'd appreciate that. Uh, more coverage to come out later this week. Uh, Going to have a great end of the week. We'll see you guys tomorrow on Thursday. Appreciate it as always.